Prognostic research aims to address complex multivariable problems which generally require a large amount of information to be gathered in order to obtain meaningful results. The general recipe for prognostic research involves first identifying the kinds of prognostic information that you're interested in gathering, and then setting up a study to collect this information in a large group of people. The aim of this is to arrive at practical guidance or even a kind of decision tool, often a rule or scoring system that clinicians can apply to their patients in order to help in the process of prognostication. While there are many similarities between prognostic and diagnostic research, both being of a descriptive nature, there are fundamental differences. And as a result, the way in which you design and conduct a prognostic study should take this into account. As with other clinical epidemiologic studies, it is vital that you first carefully consider how you will translate your clinical problem into a researchable question. Prognostic problems arise when clinicians have difficulties in accurately predicting the course of their patient's health. So as researchers, we would like to know what information we can use to come up with the most accurate predictions as possible. A general research question could be, which characteristics about my patients and their disease can help me predict their health status over a certain time period? Let us think back to our patient with lymphoma. In this scenario, we wanted to know the probability that she would survive the next five years. An appropriate research question might be, which combination of characteristics, formerly known as prognostic factors or predictors, of lymphoma patients best predict their response to treatment and five-year survival. Alternatively, an increasingly popular branch of research involves looking at whether individual new predictors, such as new biomarkers or some other kind of measurements, can improve prediction when added to already existing prediction rules. This kind of research, known as added value research, can be conducted in a similar way to the development of the research just mentioned, but brings different analytical challenges. So now that we have defined our research question, we need to decide which information we have to collect, the group of people who we want to collect this from, and how we will go about actually acquiring the information. First, let's talk about the research domain. Unlike diagnostic research, which, which focuses on patients suspected of a certain disease or health problem, in prognostic research, we already know the current health status of our patient. For our lymphoma research, the domain we are interested in is restricted to patients who have been diagnosed with lymphoma cancer, possibly even just those patients just diagnosed. For some kinds of research, the domain could be much broader. Consider a situation where you are interested in predicting the 10-year risk of insulin-dependent diabetes development in children. Here, the domain can be extended to all children, with the exception of those who have already had the diagnosis of diabetes. It is essential in prognostic research that we focus on studying patients who are currently at risk of developing the outcome and for which the prognosis is clinically relevant. So what kind of outcome are we interested in? As prognosis is intrinsically linked to the passage of time, our outcome of research is usually associated with some kind of time period. For example, we are interested not just in mortality, but mortality within five or 10 years of diagnosis. Careful thought must be put into selecting the prognostic factors that we are interested in studying. Ideally, the aim is to collect as much useful information on as many relevant predictors as possible, providing they are likely to be truly useful in making predictions. This typically includes general patient information such as age, sex, health factors, and treatment, but may include lifestyle factors, test results, imaging, and biomarkers. The predictors that you choose to study should be decided on before collecting any data, and your choices should be based on evidence from the literature or the opinions of experts in the field. 
It is worth noting that because this is descriptive research, as with diagnostic research, confounding is not an issue. There is no single key factor that we focus on studying, and instead, we want to utilize information from several different factors in order to try to describe the occurrence of the outcome. So how should we go about collecting all the information that is needed? A cross-sectional design that is commonly used in diagnostic research will not suffice because we need to observe how patients' health changes over time. Really, we need to recruit our patients, measure all of the characteristics we are interested in, and then see which of our patients develop the outcome we are interested in over a certain period of time. In this, different group of patients may experience different routes. Why not choose an experimental approach, such as a randomized trial, to gather the information we need in a controlled manner? Well, trials are costly, and randomization is really only necessary when you're interested in addressing causal research question. Trials are generally not the most appropriate kind of study for prognostic problems, but they might be useful in a situation where you want to assess the impact that the clinical use of a prognostic score has on the health outcomes in patients. For most situations, a prospective cohort study, that is a longitudinal study that follows patients in an observational manner over time, is the best choice, as it would be for our lymphoma research question. First, we would recruit a large number of newly diagnosed lymphoma patients over a period of time, and then gather all of the predictor information we're interested in, and immediately after recruitment. We would then follow those patients for five years or until they die or leave the study for other reasons. You can see from this example that prognostic research can be laborious and potentially takes a very long time to conduct, although sometimes data are available to do the study retrospectively. On a final note, before you begin your study, you will need to know how many participants to recruit. A study with only 50 patients might be affordable, but will it provide you with valuable uh, results? In general, the more prognostic predictors you wish to study, and potentially including your analyses, the more patients and participants you need in turn. As with diagnostic research, there are no clear-cut ways to derive the necessary sample size but it has been recommended that enough patients should be studied to ensure that 100 or more outcome events occur during the study. Again, this really depends on the number of predictors you're interested in. Now that we have designed our study, it is time to begin enrollment, taking measurements of our patient characteristics of interest at baseline. Then it is a matter of carefully following up our patients over the study period.